If you've never heard of a digital nomad, that's probably bound to change soon. There are a growing group of people who can work in any time zone and from any location. The trend is being driven by millennials around the globe. I'm in Bali attempting to spend an entire day as a digital nomad. I'm trading in my corporate office routine for a day at a tropical co-working space. And lucky for me, it's just down the street from the beach. I arrived to an open air space called Dojo. It's filled with people from around the world now living in Bali. They work as entrepreneurs, developers, designers, you name it. And it basically feels like a huge open air tree house. Digital nomad. It'll cost me about 15 US dollars for a 24 hour pass, which includes Wi-Fi, and I can work anywhere in this space. I pick a seat near a pool and order a smoothie and, well, avocado toast. A millennial staple, perhaps? Yes, they even have it in Bali now. After a few hours, I'm ready for a change, so I move elsewhere. I meet a few expats. They invite me to go to lunch with them on the beach. It's time yeah. for lunch. Uh, so, what's for lunch? Coconuts. Coconuts. <laughs> Cassie and Shay have been global digital nomads for four years now. They're originally from the US and Canada and have lived in Bali for the past year. All the work you normally could have from California you can do. Right exactly. here. Oh, for sure. I feel like if anything, we're more productive here. When I'm back home in the States, like specifically in Orange County, I feel like I'm always in my car. By the time I get home, it's like 9 p.m. and I'm just so exhausted and I still feel like I haven't gotten enough accomplished. Not only are they personally living embodiments of digital nomads, but their entire business venture revolves around it. They started the Bucketless Bombshells, a company which helps millennial women build an online business while traveling the world. They do this by providing online courses which teach skills like website design and digital marketing. And then there's Zach. He's a digital nomad from Michigan and works as a freelance software engineer for a variety of clients. He's been in Bali for a few months now and pays under $500 a month for his apartment and his motorbike, which gets him everywhere he needs to on the island. He often goes surfing in the middle of his workday. Okay, if this is their weekday life, I'm dying to know what do they do on the weekends? Lots of sunsets, lots of weekend adventures. Cassie and Shay break down their cost of living. They each pay $500 a month to live in a villa with a pool. The cost of living is so inexpensive. We have like daily housekeeping. It's time to eat. All right guys, I gotta go have a massage at 1.30. But... Enjoy. Enjoy it. See ya. Bye. Ciao. Wait, you're going for a massage? I thought you said you have a meeting at 1.30. It's like the same thing. <laughs> That's what you tell your client. M massage meeting. <laughs> All right. Nice to meet See you. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. <laughs> okay. I know massages are a thing to do for tourists in Bali, but apparently living here is no different. And for good reason. Across from the office, you can get a one hour massage for just seven US dollars. Cassie heads out, but the lunch continues for a while. And by now, I'm getting antsy. I still want to try surfing, but I have a conference call at two. I can't remember taking a lunch break this long since my days of doing internships. At last, we pay. Lunch on the beach, including the fresh coconut, cost me about six US dollars. Time for an afternoon surf. What's your name again? Zach. Zach. Upton. Upton. Okay. I'm not nearly as good as Zach, but he has a lot more practice. After a long day of working, it's nice just to come and uh, paddle around and get your blood flowing. I love it. It's time to go back to the office. Back to work. Back to work. We make our way back to the space and I set up at another new spot. The afternoon is filled with more work and even more coconuts. At about 5 p.m., I'm interrupted by a sign from one of the staff members. Every Friday night, the community of digital nomads here head to a beach bar to kick back and relax. Eventually, I pack up myself and head out to meet more people from the co-working community. With the boom of tech companies like Airbnb and Uber making consumers rethink the value of home and car ownership, I'd say the growth of the digital nomad lifestyle makes sense. But unfortunately, I don't see it happening for me anytime soon. So for now, I'll have to trade the coconuts for coffee and give up walking to the beach for waiting for the elevator.